Hey everybody, it's uh, Wednesday, June 17th, 2020. So today is the fifth anniversary of those nine black Christians who were killed in Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston, South Carolina, in uh, Mother Emanuel AME Church. Um, Five years ago, our sisters and brothers in Christ, on a Wednesday night, were having a Bible study, and the young man was asked, um, or asked, I should say, to participate, was welcomed into the group, sat there for a time and listened to them as they studied and talked about and debated um, God's word, and then uh, pulled out a gun and killed nine of them. He said afterwards that he was trying to start a race war. I don't think he needed to start it because it's been going on and is still going on, but he certainly added fuel to that race war by killing nine African-American sisters and brothers in Christ in a Bible study in a church. We Lutherans have a connection, if you will, to what happened there. The young man who killed the nine sisters and brothers in Christ had Lutheran roots. He was a part of, at one time, a Lutheran congregation. Two of the people who were killed, two of the pastors, were educated in a Lutheran seminary. So we had connections with the sinner and the saints in this interaction. So today, five years later, I want you to hear those names of those people, and I'm going to go through a litany, and I'm going to pray. So it was a Wednesday night when the Reverend Sharonda Coleman Singleton, Cynthia Marie Graham Hurd, Susie Jackson, Ethel Lee Lance, the Reverend DePayne Middleton, Dr. Tawanza Quibwe Diop Sanders, the Reverend Daniel Lee Simmons, the Reverend Myra Singleton Quarles Thompson, and the Honorable State Senator and Pastor of the Church, Reverend Clementa C. Pickney, were killed, murdered in a Bible study in a church in Charleston, South Carolina. The Emmanuel Nine were gifted, loving, and faithful people who spent their lives striving for excellence, connection, and the presence of God, and spent their last moments in the study of God's Word. They leave a legacy of grace, resistance, family, and faith. Gracious God, in remembering their lives and witness, we are called to a wider understanding of the Spirit's work in the world and their work in the world they were preachers, they were students, they were teachers, they were coaches, they were mentors, they were leaders, they were musicians, they were poets, they were barbers, they were custodians, they were bus drivers, they were veterans, they were librarians, they were advocates, they were public servants, they were legislators. In lives of faithful dedication, your servants, Clementa, Cynthia, Daniel, DePayne, Ethel, Myra, Sharonda, Susie, and Twanza, lived by your promises, sharing their gifts with those in their families and communities. May we not forget their lives taken way too soon. In the years to come, let us share their names and their witness so that the world comes to know of your spirit at work in and through them. Let us pray. 
Save us, O God, from ourselves, from racism often cloaked in pious words, from the machinations of white supremacy hidden in calls for civility, from microaggressions thinly veiled in arrogance, from apologies when they don't give way to action, from forgiveness without facing the truth. Deliver us, O God, from expecting siblings of color to continue to bear this emotional work, which is not theirs to do. Grateful for the long arc that bends toward justice, we pray. Grant us wisdom. Give us courage for the facing of these days. And by the power of your Spirit, all for the sake of the kingdom, we share in Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray and remember. Amen. See you tomorrow.